So, welcome aboard RS800 1144 for the 2019 Fernhurst Buck Strike at Dash. This is the first event in the Selden uh, Cell Juice Winter Series. Um, it's a really popular winter series in the UK of um, a series of handicap events, various formats at inland sailing clubs throughout the winter. Uh, gets massive turnouts and it was the same again for the first event of the 2019-2020 uh, winter season and we got 117 boats at Drake which I think uh, was a record for the for the Drake at Dash. Um, the event as you can see is uh, well supported with GPS tracking which you can view on playback after the event and uh, with a few camera whoopsies that I forgot to Forgot to uh, get the camera the right way up for some for some of the races and didn't turn it on. Didn't get my head cam on for others. So um, the the trail tracking is really good just to piece together uh, the story of the race, uh, work out where you gain and where you lost. So this is the first race and we're following around the course along the top reach, down a VMG run on the outer trapezoid and across a broad reach at the bottom before rounding up onto a beat into the start finish line. So the four short races like this, average average laps corrected with PY on the Saturday. And then we we're supposed to have an all in pursuit race on the Sunday, but unfortunately there was no win. So the results just stood from the four corrected time races on the Saturday. So actually um, did really well in the first race, felt like we we're going really well. We were in the fast fleet, so started first and managed to keep clear air, negotiate our way through the um, through the slower fleets we came out to lap them and got a really good result in that. Um, but this, focusing on the second race, mostly because I sorted out the camera, well, kind of, it's pointing at the back of the boat. We do tilt it up later, so there is some good footage. Um, so I'm, so yeah, this is it, the second race of the Drake at Dash. Got a start in the middle of the line. I think the committee boat end was favoured, but it was just so packed full of boats. And being one of the faster boats in our fleet, we just thought we'd start a bit further down the line, get a bow down, get some good speed going, and work out to the left-hand side of the course, which panned out pretty well. Um, got a got clear air for most most of the leg. Fortunately, when we tacked in on the lay line, we the Norfolk punt tapped in just on top of us. Norfolk Punt is supposed to be a little bit of a slower boat but it's got a huge sail area and uh, in these light winds it was super rapid so when that thing taps on you it's uh, it's not good news unfortunately. That would be the story of this second race for us really. Uh, just trying to chase this supposedly slower boat around the course. So here we are tacking in, managed to find a little bit of a gap behind the Norfolk Punt this one will mark and onto the two sail reach. This was quite a good leg for the 800 really. We managed to keep the boat planing most of the time up around eight, nine, ten knots. Um, so good boat speed. We're just having to really, um, really steer quite a lot though to um, to get keep the apparent on the boat, you know, heading up in the lulls, uh, looking further up the lake for a gust that we can bear off in and take back down to the rim line. So end up sailing quite a big quite a big arc just to keep the um, keep the boat moving and we got to the outer piece or we didn't have quite enough pressure to get down to the mark so went for an early hoist and, uh, and passed the mark and then a, an early jive out. Not the, not the neatest of jibes there but we thought the boats behind looked like they had quite good pressure on that reach so we thought we'd jive back over. Actually the previous race the port jive had been the longer jive downwind so sometimes favoured to get that over and done with first. The fireball though punt and the RS800 all straight set and held on though um, so we put a jive in back to, to meet them so we weren't too isolated. Nice little jibe there, nice and smooth, but 
Unfortunately, uh, the pressure on the run really wasn't good for us. You can see um, RS800-1124 really caught up with us, just going across yeah. the transom there. And the Norfolk punt um, had just extended away from us, around that little mark, well ahead. So then we had this uh, three sail reach at the bottom, which is quite hard pressed. Uh, right drop down on the wire, speed over 11 knots, probably quite a good leg for the 800, especially in these light winds, just good to get the boat up and, up and planing. Uh, quite often had to drop a little bit before the leeward mark and then two sail it in for the last kind of 10-15 seconds, but no major dramas. And then headed out towards the right hand side of the course. We generally favoured the right hand side of the beats at wind just because it was a little bit clearer air with the slower fleets beating up the middle. Um, we also thought there was a little bit of extra breeze just around uh, in front of the clubhouse where the wind bends around that shore. So kind of worked out towards the right hand side and okay beat, just struggling a little bit for breeze on this, um, on this second kind of windward leg. Um, not always twin trapeze. So second downwind and at this point um, we were just catching up a load of boats. I didn't realise at the time but there had been a general recall for the medium fleet which means they'd started last and then caught up with the slow fleet which just left us with this huge like massive fleet to head through all at once. We should have really held on that jibe further like the Norfolk punt did but we ended up cutting across uh, trying to negotiate our way through the whole of the medium fleet and the whole of the slow fleet all at once. So you're kind of ducking down, they're heading up, um, and then trying to jibe in, get room on people. Bit of a nightmare this uh, this mark rounding, and we were really quite nervous heading into the into this lured mark. Yeah. Uh, this purple eight two is probably pretty key. Four twenty, we're going to have room on now. So it's a matter of identifying who you've got room on and then slowing the boat down as you get to the mark just so you don't sail into the back of anyone ahead of you which we managed to do quite well here and uh, got an inside inside berth around the mark which is normally a good thing except uh, actually in these mixed fleets when you've got boats without spinnakers you do risk getting blown down on top of them but luckily we managed to get around that mark really neatly and uh, just just hold on and find some pressure below these these boats reaching over. It's the second time to Lua Mark, we're really in the thick of the um, of the slower medium fleet now. Again just decided to um, push out right up this up this beak because we thought it was where some of the better pressure was. So we took a little hitch out to the right hand side again and this was quite a good beat for us. The punt held on longer and was probably caught up in a little bit of traffic but we headed back to the clubhouse and tacked and got into, got into some pressure and seemed to close the gap on the Norfolk punt a little bit. Of course it is a bit of a slower boat than us on PY so we really should be beating on the water and it was sailing incredibly for its handicap. Yeah, found a bit of pressure on this right hand side and got twin wiring and closed the gap down on the uh, on the Norfolk punt again. So probably only 10-15 seconds behind it as we head into this uh, last woman mark. Just catching up on the GP14s which were the lead boats in the slow fleet and the last boats we've got to get past before we've got a clear track. So here we are just um, scraping around the front of the lead GP14, setting the kite and uh, heading off on the on the downwind for the uh, for the last time. We straight set again, pressure was up really and we got good boat speed with this straight set so up over 11 knots and we were bearing down on the Norfolk punt. It's good boat speed here, I don't know if it would improve if we drive back. Say again? So we just put a jibe in before the Norfolk punt so we can stay in this pressure down the centre of the course. 
Nice, neat little jibe there. Bean's doing an extra couple of jibes, but we just thought it was worth it just to say in that pressure, keep the boat speed up over 10 knots. Then on this uh, final reach, we really closed up close behind the Norfolk punt and it was just a leg race, uh, three spinnaker reach and uh, the breeze was up a little bit. The Norfolk punt was just struggling for height and getting uh, blown a bit down the reservoir and we managed to ha hold our smaller kite for longer, get inside them and uh, drop for the leeward mark. Must say it's really fun racing actually. Um, even though the pressure wasn't, uh, the wind wasn't quite as strong as we would have liked for, for best performance in the 800. It was still just close racing with us in the other 800 in the races. Um, really fun on the short courses. Loads of other boats to navigate around. So it was actually really good training for a for a winter event. And uh, obviously great to see so many people in the bar on Saturday evening and just so many people at the sailing club at uh, this time of year is fantastic so yeah thanks to um, to sponsors Selden and Fernhurst Books and Sail Racer and the Sail Juice guys for, for making these events happen. That was it, the uh, end of the race. Uh, I think we finished uh, fifth or sixth in that race. Um, the next race the wind dropped off more and we had a stinker finishing 70 something on corrected time and uh, luckily the wind just picked up with a bit of rain for the last race of the day and I think we got a top 10 in that one which left us fourth overall which we actually could chuff with, uh, couldn't actually believe the results <laughs> were that good really, wasn't expecting to do very well on a on a handicap event in the 800 when when we weren't really twin trapezing all the time so um yeah good result for us and a really fun event so the next one is at datchet in a week or so's time so check that out similar sort of format to the drake at dash so get yourselves there and have a fun time